English Language Academy. Practice makes perfect. Listen and practice. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Today, I want to talk about a very interesting wedding tradition in America. It is common in many other Western cultures too. The tradition is that every bride is supposed to wear something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue on her wedding day. The saying comes from an old English nursery rhyme. Something old helps the bride remember her family history. It is often a piece of jewelry from the bride's grandmother. Something new is a symbol of the couple's new life. It is usually the bride's shoes, but it could be anything. Something borrowed represents the importance of friends in a marriage. It can be anything given to the bride. By her closest married friend. Finally, something blue is worn because the color blue symbolizes purity and loyalty. It can be anything from a piece of clothing to a flower. This tradition has been around for many years and is still very common. Listen and practice. Ice hockey is one of the most popular winter sports. It is very popular in cold weather countries like Canada, Russia, and the Czech Republic. In those countries, kids play ice hockey on frozen ponds and rivers. Things you need to play ice hockey are hockey skates, a hockey stick, and a puck. Ice hockey is a great winter sport. Listen and practice. Iqbal Masih was born in Pakistan in 1983. His family was very poor. When he was four, they could not repay a debt, so they sold him instead. Iqbal had to work in a carpet shop. That's all he did, 14 hours a day, six days a week. One day, Iqbal learned this was illegal. He decided to escape, but the local police caught him and brought him back. It was illegal, but the shop owner paid the police, and they ignored the law. Iqbal tried again and again. Finally, he succeeded. And then helped other children do the same. He saved over three thousand children this way. He began traveling around the world. He taught adults about the problem of child slavery. Tragically, Iqbal was shot and killed in 1995. The crime remains a mystery, but Iqbal's fight still goes on. Listen and practice. In 1968, Lena Maria Klingvall was born. She was a healthy Swedish baby with a beautiful smile, but she was a little different. Lena had no arms, and her one leg was much smaller than the other. This did not stop Lena. She learned to use her feet like hands. She learned to swim too. She was good at it. In 1988, she went to the Paralympics in Seoul. She got fourth place. After that, Lena studied music in college. Then she began singing as a pro. 
she became popular at home and in Korea, Japan, and Thailand. Today, Lena is also an artist. She uses her feet to paint. Lena gives lectures about her challenges. She is also the subject of a movie. Lena is a good role model. She gives hope to many people. Listen and practice. Your body is an amazing machine. How does it work? Bones and muscles work together, like an arrow and a bow. Bones hold your body up. They're hard and don't bend like an arrow. Muscles make your body move and keep your balance. Muscles bend and stretch. Then they return to their old shape like a bow. Imagine a stretchy arrow and a bow that can't bend. That won't work. If you have no bones and muscles, what happens? Without bones, you fall down. You're like a jellyfish. Without muscles, you're a bag of bones. You can't balance. You're like a tree with no roots. The wind tips you over and you can't get up. Trees don't have things like muscles, so they can't move. Jellyfish have no bones, so they can't stand up. Listen and practice. The Sahara Desert is the hottest place in the world. It is in northern Africa and covers 11 countries. It is really hot there because it's near the equator. The desert is the same size as the United States. Only a few animals live there, like camels, goats, and vipers. And only a few plants can live there, like cactuses and olive trees. Not many people live there either because there isn't enough water. There are even huge sand dunes as high as 180 meters. The average temperature in the Sahara Desert is over 30 degrees, but it can be as high as 50 degrees during the hot period. Listen and practice. Wind energy. Wind is moving air. To catch wind energy, people build wind turbines in windy places like high hills or near beaches. Wind turbines are tall and they have three or four blades at the top. The blades turn like a propeller when the wind blows on them. The blades then turn a generator inside the wind turbine to create electricity. When many wind turbines are built together to make a lot of electricity, this is called a wind farm. Winds are stronger when they are higher in the sky, so scientists are inventing wind energy machines that look like kites. They send electricity to Earth through long cables. Listen and practice. Energy from water. People can use the kinetic energy of moving water to make electricity. For example, water that moves down mountains moves very quickly, and so it has a lot of kinetic energy. In a hydroelectric power station, this water moves quickly into pipes, which push it through turbines. The water turns turbines that turn generators to make electricity. Some hydroelectric power stations are next to rivers. A large wall called a dam holds the water so it becomes a store of potential energy. 
When the water stored behind a dam is pushed through pipes and turbines, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy that can be used to make electricity. The Hoover Dam is one of the biggest hydroelectric power stations in the USA. It makes electricity for about 1.3 million people. Listen and practice. We can all help to save energy. We can use fewer fossil fuels every day by changing some of the things that we do. For example, we can save oil by walking, riding bicycles, sharing rides to school, or traveling by bus instead of making all our journeys by car. This will also reduce the amount of air pollution and greenhouse gases that go into the air. We can use less electricity by turning off lights and electric machines when we aren't using them. In the future, there will be more people on Earth, and we will need more electricity and more energy for our vehicles. What will you do to help to save energy for the future? Listen and practice. Are you worried about what to buy your kid for his or her birthday? Then come over to Charlie's Sports Shop. We have all kinds of fun sports equipment, motorized scooters, bocking stilts, and luge boards, to name a few. If your kid loves exercising, I suggest bocking stilts. Bocking stilts are spring-loaded shoes that make you jump high like a kangaroo. If your kid is an adventurer, a luge board will do. A luge board is a type of high-speed skateboard you lie down on. If your kid is busy and has to get around to places fast, a motorized scooter would be a perfect present. They are gas-powered scooters that go really fast. Just remember, all these sports are a little risky, so don't forget to buy your kid a helmet too. Listen and practice. Look in your refrigerator. Where did all the food come from? Of course, it came from a farm or the ocean. You picked it up in the supermarket. But where was the farm, and which ocean? Most people don't know, but they should because their choices affect global warming. It's all about the distance your food travels. Transporting food burns fuel. The longer the distance, the more fuel it takes. Of course, burning fuel adds CO2 to the atmosphere. The CO2 traps heat from the sun, and that raises the Earth's temperatures. Scientists agree that this will cause environmental problems. Imported food uses the most fuel. Most of it travels by ship or airplane. Even food from your own country has to travel in trucks. The farther away it starts, the more fuel it uses. That's why many people look for locally grown food. Buying local food saves fuel. Also, it's fresher. Listen and practice. Hello, I'm your heart. You know what I do? I pump blood around the body, but how? Look inside. Here I am, inside the rib cage. I'm right between your lungs. That's important because the blood has two main jobs. 
One is taking oxygen to the rest of the body. The other is bringing carbon dioxide back. The lungs breathe in oxygen, and they breathe out carbon dioxide. Some blood comes from the lungs to me. That blood has oxygen in it. Some blood goes from me to the lungs. That has carbon dioxide, and the lungs get rid of it. Can you see the arteries and veins? Both are tubes that blood travels through. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood back to the heart. I keep it all moving smoothly. Listen and practice. According to a survey conducted in over 20 countries, the most serious type of pollution in the world is now water pollution. Water pollution is a major cause of death worldwide, and at present, around 500 million people in the world do not have access to clean drinking water. So how can you help? There are many ways to help prevent it. One way is to reduce water use. We can do this by taking shorter showers. Second, throw away dangerous chemicals properly. That means do not put paint or car oil in the trash. Third, only buy from companies that have good environmental records. If polluting companies can't make money, they will have to change their ways. Listen and practice. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is James Richardson, and I am from the Olympics Committee. The topic of my speech today is the differences between the Summer and Winter Olympics. I want to start by saying there are two kinds of Olympic Games. Summer Olympic Games, and Winter Olympic Games. First, I will talk about the Summer Olympic Games. The Summer Games are bigger than the Winter Games. In the Summer Games, over 200 countries compete. Also, there are more than 40 different kinds of sporting events. But the Winter Olympic Games are much smaller than the Summer Games. In the Winter Games, just around 80 countries compete, and there are only 15 sports. While they are different, both the Summer and Winter Games are very popular worldwide. Listen and practice. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly, and this is my pet dog, Mickey. He has silky white hair and droopy ears. I feed him dog food, but sometimes when he behaves or does something good, I give him tasty treats like sausages and steak. He is really special. Mickey brings the newspaper every morning and barks when strangers come by the door. I love Mickey. He is the only one who can comfort me when I feel gloomy. When I cry, he comes and licks the tears off my face. No ordinary dogs can do that. Only Mickey. Isn't he adorable? Listen and practice. What is it like in Antarctica? It is the coldest place in the world, and 
the temperature there can reach minus 89 degrees. Almost all of the land is covered with snow and ice. Only a few kinds of animals, like penguins and seals, live there. There are no permanent human residents in Antarctica. The only human residents of Antarctica are the few thousand researchers who go there temporarily for research every year. They normally go to Antarctica just during the summer period because the climate during the other seasons is unbearable. Listen and practice. My name is Susie Kim. Today, I am going to give a presentation on my role model. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy my presentation. My role model is my older cousin Veronica. Ever since I was a little girl, I have always admired Veronica. Why? <laughs> to start with, Everyone at school knows her and wants to be her friend. That is because she is very friendly and kind. Veronica is also really smart. She gets really good grades and is going to a famous university next year to study engineering. If that wasn't enough, Veronica has the coolest clothes. All my friends say she has the best fashion sense. And, of course, Veronica is very pretty. She must be the prettiest girl at our school. I hope when I get older, I can be just like Veronica. It is all I want in the whole world. Listen and practice. Dinosaurs became extinct millions of years ago. Nobody knows for sure how they became extinct, but we do know a lot about them. Some of them were huge, dangerous reptiles with sharp, deadly teeth, and others were small, gentler species. There were hundreds of dinosaur species that lived in both cold and tropical areas of the world. Although we don't know what made them die off, researchers keep studying their fossils to find out. Listen and practice. Scorpions are one of the most deadly animals on the planet. They live in almost every country in the world. They are cold-blooded and nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day and hunt at night. Although they are small, their sting can cause serious pain. Most scorpions are not deadly to humans, but a few of them are. They kill around 2,000 people each year with their venom. Listen and practice. Do you know how you read these words? Your brain tells you what your eyes see. Your brain tells you what you see, hear and touch. It tells your muscles when to move. It helps you to write, speak, draw and do puzzles. Your brain is amazing. 
Your brain works all day and at night when you sleep. At night it makes you breathe and it makes your heart work. At night your brain helps you to remember things that you learn in the day. Listen and practice. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alberto Zafra. Today, the topic of my speech will be American superstitions. We don't have enough time to go over all of them, so I will just talk about my favorite three. Number one, Americans say God bless you when someone sneezes. They do this because long ago, people thought when a person sneezed, evil spirits could enter his body. Number two, Americans believe if you spill salt on a table, you will have bad luck. Strangely enough, they believe if you throw some salt over your left shoulder after you spill it, you will have good luck again. And finally, number three, Americans believe if you break a mirror, you will have bad luck for seven years. Luckily, they say if you wait seven hours to clean up the broken glass, you will have good luck again. Listen and practice. Many young people around the world become scouts. Scouts is an international organization for boys and girls aged 7 to 17 who want to learn about the outdoors. Scouts learn outdoor skills, leadership skills, make friends, and have fun. Camping is a very traditional scouting activity. During a camping trip, Scouts go hiking and practice the skills they learn during scouting meetings. At night, they often gather around a campfire to tell ghost stories and sing songs. Many scouts say that camping is the best part of being a scout. Listen and practice. When you are hungry, you eat. You put food in your mouth. Then you swallow. But where does the food go after that? The food travels down your throat and into your stomach, where all the interesting stuff happens. In the stomach, food is broken down into all the good things you need to grow big and strong. The stomach is shaped like a small bag. It can hold about one and a half liters of food. That's a lot of food. There are special juices in the stomach that break the food down into really small pieces. A person eats about 450 kilograms of food each year. Imagine how busy a stomach is each day. That's why we have stomach aches sometimes. Too much food or the wrong kinds of food can make our stomachs hurt. Now you know what happens to the food you eat. Listen and practice. Bobby is a curious boy. One day, he saw a picture in a magazine. The picture showed a woman lying in a chair. She had two thin slices of cucumber on her eyes. It must be good for my eyes, he thought. That afternoon, Bobby cut two slices of cucumber. He laid on his back and carefully placed the cucumber on his eyes, just like the magazine photo. 
He felt so relaxed that he fell asleep. When Bobby's mother came home, the house was quiet. She wondered where Bobby was. Maybe he is sick, she thought. She went up to Bobby's room and found him sleeping with his two huge cucumber eyes. Ah! She gasped in surprise. But when she found out what Bobby was doing, she laughed. What a curious little boy! Listen and practice. Rico's mother tells him a story about a big bird. This bird has long legs and a long neck. What is it? It is an ostrich. When ostriches are frightened, they hide their heads in the sand. They think that if they cannot see danger, nothing bad will happen. One day, an ostrich was being chased by a wolf. It was really scared. So, it hid its head in the sand. The bird assumed that if he couldn't see the wolf, then the wolf couldn't see him either. But the wolf saw the rest of the ostrich, and he quickly ate the bird. Rico laughed. What a dumb bird! Rico's mother said, Yes, pretending danger doesn't exist does not make it so. Listen and practice. I ran inside feeling really excited and nervous. That's when Dad explained it all to me. This happens every 18 years. That's why I had never seen it before. I'm only 10. So why did it look so big and bright? Well, the moon is normally 253,000 miles away from the Earth. But on this day, it was 31,000 miles closer to us. Don't worry, it's natural and normal. It will happen again in 18 years. How old will I be then? Wow, I will be 28 years old. But I won't be scared when I see it next time. When you understand why things happen, you are not afraid of them anymore. Keep your eyes open and you will be able to see the big moon too. Listen and practice. Our teacher, Mr. White, has two sons. Both of them are deaf. They can't speak either. When the first boy was born, they found that he could not hear sounds. In great shock, Mr. White and his wife went to many different hospitals to see treatment. After three years, their sons still could not hear sounds. They accepted the fact that their son would never hear anything. His world would be silent. A few years later, their second son was born. Like their first child, this son was deaf too. After talking to experts, they learned that the reason why their children were born deaf was defective genes. Even so, Mr. White loves his sons very much. Every day, he sends them to a special school. The two boys are very smart. Mr. White uses sign language to talk to his sons. He taught us some sign language, too. Listen and practice. 
Believe it or not, you can greatly improve your health in 10 very simple ways. 1. Eat breakfast. Breakfast gives you energy for the morning. 2. Go for a walk. Walking is good exercise, and exercise is necessary for good health. 3. Floss your teeth. Don't just brush them. Flossing keeps your gums healthy. 4. Drink 8 glasses of water every day. Water helps your body in many ways. 5. Stretch for 5 minutes. Stretching is important for your muscles. 6. Get enough calcium. Your bones need it. Dairy foods like yogurt, milk, and cheese have calcium. 7. Do something to challenge your brain. For example, do a crossword puzzle or read a new book. 8. Take a time out, a break of about 20 minutes. Do something different. For example, get up and walk or sit down and listen to music. 9. Wear a seatbelt. Every year, seatbelts save thousands of lives. 10. Protect your skin. Use lots of moisturizer and sunscreen. Listen and practice. The topic of my lecture today is the differences between ancient and modern buildings. First, I want to talk about ancient buildings. This is a very interesting subject for me because I studied ancient history in university. Ancient buildings were normally built of stone, and they took many years to complete. They were also much smaller than modern buildings. The tallest building of the ancient world was the Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. It was 146 meters tall. But now let's look at modern buildings. They are a lot different from the buildings of the ancient world. They are normally built of steel and concrete, and they only take a few years to complete. They are also much bigger than ancient buildings. The tallest building of the modern world is the Burj Khalifa in the United Arab Emirates. It is 818 meters tall.